How do you see yourself? Are you always comparing yourself to others? Do you think you are beautiful?
given us a name above every, every and anything. There's nothing greater than the name of Jesus. So I encourage you to speak that name through your house today. Walk through your house and speak his name. Declare his rule and his reign over your life. We fix our eyes upon you, God. You are the one from which all help comes from. Only you, Lord. It's you and you alone. It's you and you alone. Jesus, the answer comes from you, Lord. Fix your eyes on him today. Thank you, Jesus. Your presence is so beautiful. Thank you for worshiping with us today. There's some great things in store for you. Stay tuned. Let his presence be with you all day, all week. Amen. Mother's Day, ladies. Um, this is a great day to be a mom. Come on. People are home with their kids. Come on. They're loving on them. Come on. They're embracing them. Oh, you better preach. They're teaching them. Oh. They're hot mad at them. Hot sauce. They're feeding them. They're loving on them. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Amen. And guess what? You know, right right now we it's our favorite time where we do our five for five. Yes. So Yep, she's absolutely right. So what we want you to do, normally if we were here, we go around, hug each other, say, hey, I like your shoes, you know, all those different things. But since we're not together, what we want you to do is take the time to do what, Monica? Take out your phones. Mm -hmm. Text five people. Mm -hmm. Tell them how much you love them. Mm. Share the word of God. On. Love on them. Embrace them. Ooh. Or just text them and say, hey, girl, hey. Hey, girl, hey. Hey, girl, hey. That's what. <laughs> That's two. She on a roll. That's three. You don't even know about it. That's four. Oh, she almost done. And five. Hey, girl, hey. Hey, girl, hey. <laughs> now, listen, we might not be together, but we're always connected in the heart. As our, as our PT would say, we're always together in the heart. So we love you guys. We love you. And enjoy today's message. my goodness wasn't that an amazing time of worship come on come on there's no worship like dwc worship god is in this place and god is in this word today happy mother's day to all the beautiful mothers out there the mothers working both roles the mothers that are just doing it all we just want to take that time to honor you we thank you for just being who you are which is so many roles that many mothers play and you know the world is better because of each and every one of you so we just want to thank god for you this morning and just loose a blessing to every mom every expecting mom every grandmother out there that you did your part and we just want to thank god for you this morning and we thank god just for for the women of god that are in our nation globally amen amen today i want to speak to you um, from the text um push push um let's pray 
Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Father, that your presence, it's already here, God. It's already here. It's already working. It's already doing what you send it forth to do, Father. And so in Jesus' name, I thank you for the push of your spirit. I thank you for the word of your spirit, Father. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for the word of the Lord that is for not just women today, but families, Father, all across our nation, Father. And so this morning, I come in agreement with heaven, and I say, your kingdom come your will be done father in the name of jesus and just lift up a big shout of amen not because we're done but because of what god is going to continue to do in this um service today um in the book of luke in chapter one in verse starting in verse 26 it says this in the sixth month of elizabeth's pregnancy God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end <laughs> so then mary says in verse 34 how will this be mary asked the angel since since i'm a virgin the angel answered the holy spirit will come upon you and the power of the, the most high will overshadow you so the holy one to be born will be called the son of god even elizabeth your relative is going to have a child in her old age and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month for for no word from god will ever fail <laughs> Ooh, so many tidbits in here i am the lord's servant mary answered may your word to me be fulfilled then the angel left her there's so much in here um first of all i thought it was interesting that the angel said to her even elizabeth is old and she's about to have a kid, too, as if that was going to comfort Mary. Like, y'all both old. <laughs> like, just little things like that. Like, I know, I know, I know you're concerned. He must have known her concern was like, first of all, I'm old. I, and I'm older. Like, I don't know. I think we think of Mary as like she's like in her early 20s or something, you know, when we think about it. But for the angel to say even elizabeth is old he was trying to make he was trying to make a parallel to say even your cousin who was old is about to give birth too mary was probably just excited that she finally found a decent man and she was about to get married she wasn't even like thinking about you know the fact that she was going to do it this way you know just it just and it shows because it's you go when you read it it goes down and it says <laughs> first of all he tells her the greetings you who are highly favored the lord is with you now any of us would be like oh hey yes that is me i am highly favored the lord is with me mm, yes that's good like campbell's soup right no it says mary was greatly troubled at his words <laughs> like like who are you talking i know you're not talking to me right uh, um, and I don't know why I'm making her sound very urban right now. You know, I don't know. I just feel like Mary had some spunk. Because she didn't just like, you, you're not going to walk up to me. <laughs> First of all, I don't know you, okay? You're some angel. Okay, great. But you're not just going to walk up to me <laughs> and be talking about I'm about to have a baby. Like, <laughs> hello? Right? But he didn't even tell her about the baby yet. He was like, you're highly favored of God. Mary was sus. Mary was like, first of all, you're suspect. 
<laughs> like, where are you going with this? And it says that she was actually, the greeting, she was greatly tr greatly troubled. Not just like, oh, not just a little bit off put, but she was greatly troubled. So that tells me that she was like, and there was a little bit of fear there. Like, like oh my God, what is this, what is, what is happening here? at his words, and wonder what kind of greeting this might be. To us, we listen to that, and it says, he said, you're highly favored, and the Lord is with you. It's obvious to us when we read it what kind of greeting it is. It's, he's letting her know that you are highly favored and you are blessed. But there was something on the inside of her that for some reason registered with fear. It registered, she had a reservation about who this, what was about to happen and what was going on. But he said to her, don't be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God and you will conceive. The thing, and then she goes on to say, um, but I'm a virgin, how is this even going to be? And then when he explains it, I just can imagine that, that she is perplexed in her mind. First of all, we don't know how much the Holy Spirit, you know, was even talked about or whatever, but just, just the Spirit that we didn't even get the Holy Spirit until Jesus actually uh, descended and then ascended. So for him to talk about the Spirit right here at this point, to her, the Holy Spirit has always been. <laughs> There's the Holy Spirit again, people. I'm telling you, get a relationship with him because he's always there. He's always in the mix, you know. So he tells her the Holy Spirit, the Spirit is going to be a rest upon you. And then God is going to, the shadow of God is going to come, come over you. And then you're going to conceive like that. I love the fact that at the end of it, even in the midst of her fear, even in the midst of her concern, that she says, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. May your word to me be fulfilled. May your word to me be fulfilled. Now, I just want to go into it where I feel like she, you know, God has come to us. And he said, you're going to give birth to this. He's impregnated us with dreams. He's given, you know, some of you moms, he's given you kids. And I'm telling you, everything about your kid makes you worried. <laughs> they make decisions and they do things that concern you. And, and there's things that are happening around us, even in the world today. And there's no prayer like a mother's prayer. There's no labor like a mother's labor when she labors for or goes, to, goes in for a fight for her kids. There's nothing, there's nothing like that, that, that even a father won't fight like a mom will fight for their kid. There's something different that God put on the inside of a woman that, that makes us push beyond situation, makes us push beyond circumstance. It makes us push beyond um, our feelings. It makes us push beyond what we recognize as, as or what others will recognize as acceptable. That we, that, that we break rules all the time. And I believe that this is what God is doing. He's impregnating a generation. He's, he's visiting us even in this time of quarantine. He's going into homes, and the reason why he's clearing things up and he's free is because in the midst of it all, he's impregnating us. He's impregnating you with vision. There are those of you that are on the other side of this, and you've, you, you had a dream before, and you pushed it aside. You got discouraged, or you've grown weary in well-doing. The Bible says do not grow weary in well-doing, for if you do not faint, you will reap, a, reap the reward and do see and I'm telling you, there is a due season that is coming. There is a due season that is coming. When Mary accepted the challenge, that because it was a challenge for her to, to hear what he was saying, she wasn't even, and so now she, she, she not only has to deal with the fact that, that she, how it's going to happen, but now she has to deal with the fact that she has to tell Joseph. Now, can you imagine the fear and just the, the, the questions like, oh my God, he's going to reject me. I don't know, but God, I'm your servant. And no matter what, I trust that, that, that I trust you know what you're doing. And if Joseph is supposed to be my husband, then Joseph's going to be my husband. And he's going to understand that I'm the servant of the Lord and I will give birth to the son of the living God. Can you imagine that, that God has given her this amazing responsibility to give, not just give birth to like, uh, you know, Ray Ray. <laughs> It wasn't, you know, like, you know, you're going to have a couple of kids and then we're going to like slip a kid in there. It was like it, before you even get married, you are going to conceive. For some of us, God is saying that he was like, you thought it was going to happen this way. 
You thought it was going to happen this way. You thought it was you thought you were supposed to make a right turn and then suddenly the Holy Spirit tells you to take take a right turn. You know, when when God begins to speak and he be and he interrupts your plans, when God interrupts your vision, when God interrupts your your plan of action, when God inter interrupts your life, a lot of us, we feel that right now. We feel like our life has been completely interrupted by situation and circumstances. But when God interrupts, when you recognize that God is interrupting your life, can you stand back and say, God, I am your servant. Have your will. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth in and through my life. That's why we're able to say grace happens here. Grace happens in me and through me. When there is something about a person that lives in that state, that mind state that is saying, you know what, God, I will, no matter what I think and no matter what I feel, grace is going to happen in me and grace is going to happen through me. It's going to happen through me. God, whatever you want to do on the earth, it's going to come through me. God, whatever you want, however you want me to push, however you want to position me, God, I, I will, you can push it out through me. And so God is wanting, he's positioning us. And actually a lot of you, you were pushing one way and God's like, no, it's not going to come with you pushing in that position. I need you to switch positions because maybe that position worked for her or maybe that position worked for him but I need you to change your position and it may feel uncomfortable it may feel a little bit awkward it may feel unnatural to you but I'm telling you God is putting you in position for you to push and give birth to what he has called you to give birth to not your vision not what you feel is acceptable or not he's God has a way of interrupting our plans God has a way of coming in and interrupting intercepting what we thought was was the was the high calling and he's like no it's higher than that and we're looking at him and we're like what what do you mean it's higher than that cuz that's pretty high god and we think we have these this big idea of god's idea of big and it's bigger than that it's bigger than that. But in order to get to the bigger than that, you've got to push. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be circumstances. There's going to be things that you don't understand. There's going to be, it's not going to make sense to you. You know what, you haven't, you've never been in this place before. So you're a virgin to this territory. You're a virgin to this. And you're saying, God, I'm a virgin to this. And I don't know how it's, how are you going to, how is it even going to, I don't even know what the first step is supposed to look like. I don't even know who I'm supposed to talk to. I don't I don't even know, God, where, what door I'm supposed to go into. I don't know what door I'm supposed to close. I don't know what door I'm supposed to open, God, but I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you that you are on the other side of this. You're the, the, you're the ultimate open door, so I'm not going to have to worry about it. You know, it's virgin territory for some of us. It's virgin territory, and we've got we've to position our lives, and there's going to be people around you. There's going to be the Josephs that you're going to have to, to, to live out God's plan for your life and not feel like you have to apologize for it or make an excuse for it. God is ridding you of the excuse because you always felt like you have to have an explanation of why you're serving God. You've always felt like you had to have have a reason or you had to make it make sense so that you can explain it not only to yourself but to the uh, to others around you because it's so complex and it doesn't make sense and you feel sometimes like a fool or or, or you feel like like man like oh, I don't know like I'm gonna look stupid but I'm telling you what that's the place where God is saying change your position because it's time to push and it may not be the position that you thought thought you were gonna push from but God is saying, I need you to push. I need you to push. I need you to push, but from this direction. I need you to change directions. I need you to change positions and push from right here because from right here is where the ultimate plan of God is going to be manifested and given birth to. It's time to push, DWC. It's time to push, generation. It's time to push. It's time. You're in the birthing room. We've been, some of you have been in the birthing room. You felt uncomfortable. There 
There's been like, you know, spiritual cramping. There's been, you know, numbness. There's been all these things. And God is saying, you have felt this way and it's been uncomfortable and you've had sleepless nights. And it's not because of what I'm not doing. It's because of what I am doing. I'm ever working to will and to do for my good pleasure in and through your life. I'm ever working. God is ever working. And he changed the position and he changed your direction because it's time to push. There are those of you out there that it's, it's this is, you know, it, it may not be right now today time to push, but you can feel it. You can feel the labor pains of God. You can feel the labor pains of heaven where God is saying, push, it's time to push. You have, the push is coming. The push is coming. And there's there are others of you that's like, it's time to push right now. And it's all going to work together for the glory of God. While you're, while you're preparing to push, somebody else is pushing. While that person is pushing, somebody else is giving birth. And when it all comes together, God's ultimate plan for, for humanity is going to be manifested through those who, who say yes and they position themselves the way that he told you to position yourself. They, you reposition. There's a repositioning that God's been doing. Not only has he been like eliminating things. You know, when you're pregnant, there are specific things that you crave more than anything else. And, it, you know, somebody can offer you something that normally would be totally tasty to you. But you're like, no, I don't want that. I, I'm only I'm only craving this. I really, you know, I can't get enough of this. There are things that God is going to begin to to cause you to crave like never before. There's a, a prayer like never before. Like you're just going to begin to feel the burden of prayer, like just to begin to pray for your family, begin to pray for yourself, begin to pray for a generation. There's going to become a craving for you in that. There's going to be a craving to, to, to be more forgiving. There's going to be a craving. Your cravings are going to change. God's going to manifest that on the inside of you. And things that used to be acceptable for your appetite, for you to be able to ingest in your life, things that you used to just take in and, 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 and digest. God is saying, no, not, not right now, not in this season. He's giving you new cravings. He's giving you specific God breathed cravings that are specific to what you're, what's growing on the inside of you, because there's something growing on the inside of you. There's something growing on the inside of you, and it is God breathed. It is God's seed. It is God's vision. It is God's, the life of God on the inside of you that is time to manifest. It's time to push. It's time to push beyond where you've been. And all you have to do, like I always say, is say yes. All you have to do is reposition. All you have to do is just change direction. All you have to do is breathe. All you have to do is breathe and trust his will to be done. To sit back and say, God, it doesn't make sense. You know, when he first, when God first presents his purpose to your life, like when you first get saved, it's all great. Then people start talking to you about getting involved and doing something for God. Then it's like, ooh, <laughs> ah, I don't really crave that right now. That's not really, uh, see, because the way my uh, menu is set up, uh, I don't really have that on, that's not on the menu. That's not what, you know, that's not, I didn't, I didn't plan on making that this week. I didn't plan on making that ever. <laughs> right? I don't it's like people who, you know, when you're younger, you don't like vegetables. But then all of a sudden you get older and it's like you can't get enough of them. And there's some of you you're still there you don't like vegetables, but you need them, right? But there, the God be, will begin to shift your cravings, and he'll begin to cause you to crave things that are going to benefit you, that are going to grow you, that are going to grow what's on the inside of you for his benefit, for his glory, for his purpose, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Do you receive that today? I just felt that God wanted to just encourage us and not only encourage us, fuel us to let us know that it is time to push, that it doesn't make sense, it doesn't look right, it doesn't look like what you would have made it look like, but it looks like what he wants it to look like. And if you just say, God, you know what? I'm your servant. I'm your servant. Have your way. Whatever you want me to do, whatever position you want me to take, whatever craving you want me to have, whatever prayer you need me to pray, 
God, I will do it. I yield to you in the name of Jesus. I yield to you. I'm your servant. So it doesn't matter what I want. My discomfort doesn't matter at this point. We've got to get to that place where we stop putting our own needs above God's desire for us. I find that I, I, I hear people all the time, and it's, and, it's, and it's so natural for them to say no to God. It's too easy for us to, to, to think that it's about us. It's too easy for us to think that, that, you know, that we can abort this thing that God has caused, that impregnated us with. And what happens in the spiritual, what happens in the natural, also is happening in the spirit. When you see abortions at an all-time high and things like that, I guarantee you that a lot of it, too, is, you know, we're, we're, we're aborting God's purpose for our lives. We're aborting and, and telling, no, no, God, just straight up, no. And he's like, but I have no God because it'll make us comfortable, because it's inconvenient, because it's not as instant gratification, because it's not as satisfying. And God is saying, change positions. Change positions. You, you know, like, and in this regard, it's, you know, when they say, what's your position on our Democrat or Republican? <laughs> God is saying, change, I need you to change position. I need you to change your mind state. I need you to, to change the way you, you, you're, you're going about this thing. I need you to change the way that, that you're perceiving this. The, your understanding of it is not correct. And in the end, you're not eating the right things, so you can end up aborting the very thing that I am calling you to birth. That is a great portion connected to your destiny. And God doesn't want that to happen. So today, God is encouraging us to push. He's encouraging you. It's time to push. And he's, he says, I'll be with you all the way. That there's nothing that you have to do in order to, to be impregnated with this. That he's going to do all the work. There was nothing Mary had to do but say yes. And as I said on Wednesday night, your yes will manifest. Your yes will manifest. And because of Mary's yes, Mary, a mom, and then she had to watch Jesus grow. Then she had to watch him be a teenager and do teenager things because he went through everything that we've ever gone through. He really was human, came down in human form. And so she had to mother him all 33 years. Uh, you know, he started his ministry at 33 years old. And she knew who he was, but I don't think that that made it any easier. God has spoken to you things about your, your kids, about your family, about your husband, about your wife, about your, you know, your future, wherever position you find yourself in today. God has spoken to you about, about these things. And, and even though he's told you about it, it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy for your mind to get it. But it's not a mental thing. It's a spiritual thing. That's what you have to understand. It's not mental. It's spiritual. So when you ease into to, and, and say yes to God's spirit and you command your mind to line up with what God's spirit is doing, it makes a huge difference. And you don't need a spiritual epidural when this happens because you can give birth naturally. You will give birth naturally to the thing that he's impregnated you with. You won't need painkillers. You won't need anything to dull the, uh, how uncomfortable it is to do what God told you to do. You won't ha need anything to satisfy th that anything in your life other than just, okay, God, just say yes. And you will naturally give birth to it. Oh, I feel that. God wants you, God is saying it's going to be a natural birth. You, you're worried about how you're going to look. You're worried about what's on the other side. You're worried about all these things. But God is saying, you don't have to worry about that. I got you. I'm going to do everything. I'm going to do it all. All you have to do is position yourself, reposition yourself, or position yourself. All you have to do is be right there. Just be in the birthing room. Just be in the birthing room, and I'll do everything else. And you will give birth 
naturally to whatever it is that God has impregnated you with. You know, because even as I'm saying it, you're getting, it's coming to your mind right now. That thing, that thing right there that you that you just thought of, that thing that, that started stirring on you again, that started getting a little bit of life, don't push it down. Let it, let it live. Let it breathe. Let it rise up and let it, let God put life on it and let God birth it through you because man, the lives that it's going to impact the impact that it's going to have, it supersedes anything <coughs> that you think or imagine that you have the capacity to do because it's never about us. It was not about Mary. It was about Jesus. Mary was just a vessel, and God used her. But he was able to use her because she said yes. And because she said yes, Jesus was made manifest. And because Jesus was made manifest, we have eternal salvation. We have redemption. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have the blood of Jesus that covers us from the top of our head to the soles of the many benefits that we receive as a result of Mary's yes. We are the manifestation of Mary's yes. That's just... That's just wild. We are the manifestation of one woman's yes. She was afraid initially, but at the end of it, she said yes. And so I just want to encourage you as you're listening. Have the courage to just say yes, because your yes will manifest in generations to come. In not just immediate what you see right now, but manifest in, in generations to come Gen, many generations like pastor breck had he mentioned and i thought it was so good uh when he was preaching thriving not surviving which was amazing word um but part of it when he was talking about people saying you know i don't really see any return in my giving you know god i don't know you know it's and he was like did you see the result what was the result and the impact that your giving immediately made immediately what 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 did, was that did that person smile did that person look like they got relief you know when you when you've ever done something for anybody when you let them you know when you fed somebody you know the 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 sense of like yeah i f i did that you know i'm a good cook I, I can cook i'm a chef or whatever you know we take pride in that because we see the immediate results of that but and it so with god in the in our yes to manifest, we don't feel like we see it immediately. Mar Mary, Mary's not here, so she doesn't see us rejoicing and giving praise to God and worshiping on Sunday mornings or, or Wednesday nights and leveling up on Wednesday nights. But her yes manifest Wednesday nights level up. Her yes manifest Pastor Breck and Pastor Trissy saying yes. Pastor Breck and Pastor Trissy saying yes and manifesting you that are able to, to connect via, you know, YouTube or Instagram or, or DWCLA.com. That, that that is a manifestation of their yes. Your life and your, the changes that you've seen in your family since being connected to DWC, that is a product of their yes. That is a manifestation of their yes. The times when you're able to call them and they pray with you and they encourage you. When Pastor Breck brings the word, when PT is up here on stage killing it in praise and worship with our amazing worship team. When we have that, that is a manifestation of a yes that, was imp that they were impregnated with God only knows when. And they could have said no. And there probably would still be a DWC, but there wouldn't be this DWC. <laughs> there wouldn't be the PT and PB DWC. And we know that their yes has manifested great things in our lives. God's grace, our understanding of grace, our understanding of, of God's, God's hope, uh, just everything that they, of God's love, everything that they represent, it's as a result of their yes. If you think about your life, the impact that you have, the, mini, the different volunteers that we have that are connected to, to DWC's ministry, the volunteers that, that are here every Sunday morning, you know, setting up or, or doing whatever, that is a yes 
that manifest when people come in that they're able to to experience God in a way that they wouldn't be able to experience him if we didn't have you saying yes and to greeting, yes to children's ministry, yes to being the youth pastor, yes to being the children's director, yes to being, you know, the, the video and audio team, yes, you know, BTU, media productions, you know, bend the universe. Every time we, we, whoo. Every time we broadcast that that we're bending the universe, that we're bending the universe to be subject to God's will. That yes, that yes, because he could have sat home and said, man, they really struggling with getting this broadcast going. But he said yes to God. And every Wednesday and every Sunday, we're bending the universe to God's grace and God's love, and God's peace, and God's healing, and God's restoration. And as a result, I'm telling you, you're going to, yes, this isn't the only place you're going to see been the U, BTU Media Productions, because I'm telling you, you're going to see movies, Johnny. Whew. You're going to do movies. You're going to do productions. You're going to be everywhere. You're going to do vi video shoots. You're going to be, God is going to bless you. And so, Father, even right now, Father, I thank you that as he has chosen to say yes, to bend the universe for your glory, Father, I just give you all the honor and all the praise, and I declare a blessing. I declare open doors. I declare connections, Father God. I declare favor over his life in the name of Jesus, God. I give you glory for it. Father God, I bless Find every no that is demonically influenced, Father, in the name of Jesus. And, Father God, I see him walking through those doors. I see, Father God, investors investing, Father God, in movie ideas. I see the scripts being written and revised and made ready, Father, in the name of Jesus, for even television shows. Father, I just give you glory that the vision is greater, Father. The vision is greater, Father God, than he can even imagine. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you for that, Father, and I thank you for his yes, Father, is manifesting this broadcast right now in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, all it takes is a yes. Your yes will manifest for God in the name of Jesus, but you've got to push. You've got to push. Mary was afraid at first, but when she said yes, her yes manifests. And so I just want to encourage you on this Mother's Day to get in that birthing position and do what God is asking of you and push because it's time to give birth. In Jesus' name. Do you receive that today? Do you receive that? Hallelujah. Father God, I just thank you for every person that is listening under the sound of my voice. Father God, I thank you that this is not my word, but Father God, it is your word, Father articulated to every heart and I thank you father that they begin to reposition themselves that they begin to 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 position themselves in the birthing room father and that they say yes God have your way I will serve you and I will say yes to you father I thank you for every yes I thank you for the manifestation of every yes father and I declare your blessing father over each and every one of them as they push father I thank you for natural births to happen in in Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Well, if you receive that today, just give God a shout of praise and let him know, I receive it. Why we want to shout? Because we want to, we want to bend the universe to hear. Because the Bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. So as we declare and manifest, we are speaking to the heavens and declaring, no, no, this is what it is. And so, Father, we give you glory and we praise you for it today. In Jesus' name. We love you so much, DWC, and we thank you so much um, for just your contribution that you are continuously giving. We thank you for your partnership with DWC, and we just we wouldn't be able to be who we are without you. We say it all the time because we want you to know. We know that there are a lot of ministries out there that you can be a part of, that you can sow into. We know that, they, that you can have, you have many choices that you can choose from but we thank you for choosing to be a part of this dwc family and partnering with us to be able to move heaven for for god for our generation for our community 
in Jesus' name. We have several ways. If you're wanting to give today, we have several ways for you to be able to give. You can text the amount that you want to give to 84321. And to better explain it, check this out. Hey there, Justin here, and I wanted to show you one of the easiest ways for you to give to your church. All you gotta do, send a text message. Here, I'll show you how I set it up. All I need to do is text an amount to 84321, and a link will be sent back to me. I'll tap on that link, select my church, add an email address for the receipt, enter in my payment information, and that's it. From now on, when I want to give, I just grab my phone and text an amount. Alright, let's donate $10 now. And that's it. Oh! Oh, I added an extra zero. Yeah, I'm gonna need to fix that. Um, luckily I can. Since it's been less than 30 minutes, I just send the word refund and that last donation will be refunded. Whew. <laughs> I'm gonna try it again. And there we go. And that, my friends, is how you can give with a text message. Happy giving. Thank you so much for being with us today. We pray that this message blessed you. We pray that, that it just you feel enlightened, you feel hopeful, and that you would have the most amazing day. Listen. We, we have something that we do here, and we always want to close with it because it's a reminder of God's grace upon our lives. So we would like for you to join us and say it with us. It goes like this. Grace happens here. Grace happens in us and through us. Okay, so now it's your turn. Let's say it together. Grace happens here. Grace happens in us and through us. We love you so much. Have an amazing week and stay lifted, DWC.